I've only been on the hormones 18 months. So my nipples are like bullets. <laughs> you ready, Ken? Yeah. Well, we're all here behind you. You're right, oh. <laughs> Can you show me where your points are? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> have your own shower and WC. Into which we don't pass solids. <laughs> He's looking for a boy. After eh? The League of Gentlemen starts Monday, 11th of January. Without risk, there's no heroism, there's no history. Nixon was born to do this. The whole truth. This isn't political, Dick. This is our life. Everything's political. And nothing but the truth. The system comes very close to cracking. There are divisions in this country. That's because you created it. What is your reaction to James McCord's statement that high-level White House officials were involved in the Watergate break-in? Why, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. The truth should be fully brought out. There can be no whitewash at the White House. There are times when even the president can go too far. Nixon, in half an hour on BBC Two. Politicians take cover. This is BBC Two. Uh, hello, welcome to the Christmas Armistice, uh, and we're all excited. It's just two days to go before the Euro, a year to the millennium, and three months until Noel Edmonds is sacked by the BBC. <laughs> so it's a good time to look back at a year which so far has been dominated by Bill Clinton. Now, Clinton's had it up to here with Monica Lewinsky, <laughs> but uh, there's probably more scandal on the way as a result of this video evidence from his recent trip to Britain. I'm not going to give any advice. I'm going to sit here and take it. <laughs> Terrible abuse of hospitality there. Just wandered in and shouted, bring me the head of Claire Short. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Prince Charles celebrated his 50th birthday and uh, loads of celebrities clubbed together at his party and got him uh, this present here. It's a mock-up of his mother's death certificate. <laughs> You can see there, it says, uh, cause of death, choked on an orb. <laughs> there you are. And it was uh, a good year for Carol Vorderman, uh, who put all her programmes on one new channel, so now you can tune into 24-hour rolling Vordivision. <laughs> Hello, welcome to another terrible Carol Vorderman programme. <laughs> Me, very odd looking. Woman, every week, 250,000 controversial Carol Vorderman series oh. heading your way. So, get me banned because I get on your tits. <laughs> so, <laughs> Carol Vorderman. Bye. And finally, William Hague was criticised. He spent the whole year trying to come up with a more caring Tory image, but still managed to boil all his policies down to let's free Pinochet. <laughs> And if that wasn't bad enough, this was the year his voice started breaking. To be leader of this party is a great honour. <laughs> but I see your endorsement. Not as a government <laughs> to be enjoyed. But as the beginning of a challenge to be met. <laughs> I've no illusion about the mammoth dust ahead of us. <laughs> but I pledge with every breath in my body to do everything in my power to rebuild this party <laughs> and to do so not for me, not for the MPs, <laughs> not even for you, but for the millions in Britain who share conservative values, <laughs> who believe in their country and who need a strong and united conservative party.
That was, uh, that was an extract from William Higgs' speech, I Have a Wet Dream. <laughs> I got a fantastic book for Christmas. It's a really top present. Next one in the series, it's Delia Smith's How to Shit. <laughs> it's fantastic. There are lots of things in this book I just didn't know, with lots of really original but simple ideas and some great colour pictures. There's some oh, kiwi fruit on the back. I can't wait for the 24-part <laughs> series in the new year. Uh, this is my uh, favourite Christmas thing I got uh, this year. Kenneth Branagh mistletoe. It's fantastic stuff. Watch this. You put it on your head like this, bit of mistletoe either side. Kenneth. Hello now. Mm. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> there you go. Bill Clinton mistletoe. <laughs> oh, uh, Tony Blair mistletoe. Kiss my ass. <laughs> All the party leaders this year sent out Christmas cards to their supporters, or in William Hague's case, supporter. Uh, but Tony Blair broke from tradition by sending everyone a Christmas crib. Here it is. It's a Brit crib. It shows the coming of our saviour. There's the baby Tony. <laughs> wrapped in swaddling teeth. And uh, everyone's come to pay homage. There's uh, Jeremy Paxman, Zoe Ball, <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> All gathered round the Christ creep. <laughs> and uh, it's Blair's aim to have one of these at every school by the year 2000. And one thing I must show you here, uh, this here, this is the Blessed Virgin Mandelson. <laughs> uh, we've been told by the BBC to call him the Blessed Virgin. Um, actually, although the BBC has recently relaxed its ban on mentioning what was said about Peter Mandelson on Newsnight, so I think tonight, for the first time, we can show that clip from Newsnight. Chris Smith is openly gay, uh, Chris Smith and, is and openly I think gay. Peter Mandelson is certainly great. Uh, yeah, I think we'll just move on from, from there. Oh, Peter Mandelson is great. No wonder they try hushing it up. <laughs> Of course, you know, it's been forgotten in all this, because uh, it was Ron Davis, wasn't it, who started all that sort of gay labour stuff? Oh, yes. yes. But um, I think who should have the most sympathy is the mysterious Rastafarian <laughs> who invited him for a meal on Clapham Common. <laughs> you know, one moment of madness, he goes out on Clapham Common and talks to a Secretary of State for Wales. And if you know the Rastafarian community, you'll know that's a resigning issue. <laughs> <laughs> to hang around with ministers in the dark. He couldn't look his mates in the eye. <laughs> Apparently, I have to make up some rubbish about going off to have oral sex in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice the papers all went really mad, didn't they, about this uh, speculation of, are we run by a gay mafia? That's such a strange face, gay mafia. Yeah. It sums up all sorts of weird images. Well, I'm just, well, I'm just thinking of that um, scene in The Godfather where Al Pacino goes into the toilets because there's a, a gun strapped underneath. In a gay mafia film, you'd just be in there for hours. <laughs> <laughs> if you attack the gay mafia, would you wake up with Jimmy Somerville's head in your bed? <laughs> I did this I, morning I, anyway. I almost wish you did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think maybe Labour didn't help this whole gay Labour issue at the conference in Blackpool. Take a look at this. Uh, now you're talking. Judy Garland's film is played constantly on the big screen while they're talking. And there you go, everybody's singing the new Labour anthem, La Vie en Rose. This Labour government is very ambitious. It has a great programme of legislation it intends to pass in the lifetime of the current population. <laughs> so let's see how they're doing 20 months in with their tiny pledge promises. Earlier in the year, we blew up one of these pledge cards to 100 times its size to see if there'd been any changes so far. This NHS one, they've actually, they're not doing too well because actually, since they've been in power, waiting lists have actually gone up by 50,000. So they've had to alter this promise very slightly. Now, David, could you cover up the first five words of that. Right. And this is what they're actually doing, is treating an extra 100,000 celebrities to Downing Street pisser. <laughs> OK, so let's uh, spool forward to the present day. We've got the large pledge card here. Let's see what uh, recent developments there have been. And uh, let's start with this first pledge here. No rise in income tax rates is now going to become no rise in offshore tax <laughs> rates. And that was Jeffrey Robinson's suggestion. <laughs> and uh, this one here, inflation and interest rates as low as possible becomes inflation and interest rates, now the Bank of England's problem. <laughs> OK, they've just announced some new initiatives on education. So this pledge, pledge number one, cut class sizes to 30 or under for five, six and seven-year-olds. This now has been slightly amended to cut class sizes to 30 or under for five, seven-year-olds. <laughs> They're sticking to that rigidly. <laughs> okay, a policy uh, now sponsored by one of Labour's business cronies. Uh, this one here fast track punishment for persistent young offenders by having the time from arrest to sentencing. 
uh, becomes uh, rail track punishment uh, for persistent commuters by doubling the time from London to Glasgow. And, uh, are you pleased to know Richard Branson actually met that target within hours of Labour taking office? Now, the Tories, of course, also brought out a pledge card at the last election. It just had the one pledge on it. There it is. We'll be off then. <laughs> and fair play, they've stuck to it. There are now no Tories in Wales, and the only sighting in Scotland since the last election has been this picture taken by an American tourist. <laughs> it's the Loch Ness Tory. <laughs> Further investigation revealed it was a hoax. It was actually just a monster. <laughs> Worse still, Tory party membership is now at rock bottom. With this in mind, we decided to find out just how desperate they were for members earlier this year by sending out a string of unusual applicants by post or in person to Tory constituency offices. So who got in? <laughs> Number one, an urban terrorist with balaclava, bulletproof vest and carrying a hand grenade. <laughs> I was just wondering if I could join the party. Cos I do, I mean, I, I, I will help out, I'll do anything, you know, oh, from leafleting to, you know, whatever. I like Haig, I like his style. Can I smile? <laughs> <laughs> I'm remembering this really cool lighter hand grenade sort of uh, copy. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Just feels good, it feels good in the hand, you know. Accepted. <laughs> Mr H. Lecter. <laughs> Accepted. G. Pinochet. Yes, please. <laughs> a convict in prison uniform <laughs> who arrived in a security van and was unhandcuffed from a prison warder outside the Tory office. Hello, yeah, I'd uh, like to join the party, please. <laughs> Hello there. Hello. Thanks. <laughs> Accepted. <laughs> Ms M Hindley, HM Prison <laughs> Dome. No problem. <laughs> Friend of the young Gary Glitter. Hello, I just want to join your gang. <laughs> Glad to have you aboard. Mr. A. Scargill <laughs> accepted. A man wearing only his pants. <laughs> Closed for today. Well, you are the party of opportunity, aren't That's you? Right. Really? Yes. I'm, I'm right here, can I? Right here, and we'll send you a call. Have you got a telephone phone. number that I can read? No, if you write to us, we'll send you a call. Are you phone. open tomorrow morning? Yes. All right, thank you very much. Told he could join if he came back tomorrow. <laughs> Lieutenant Uhuru. <laughs> accepted. <laughs> Darth Vader, the most evil man in the universe. Good morning. I'd like to join the party. Name and title, Lord Darius. <laughs> You've just come from the Death Star. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Let's see how you money then. And what's the uh, minimum donation? Five. Let me say ten. Ten pounds? Yes. Yeah, that's very reasonable. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, you're most kind. Oh, Will I see myself up? Oh, I see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Accepted. A keen young grassroots Tory supporting teenager who loves William Hague. Um, I'm here to join the party. I can't let you join because you're too young. You see, I really want to join because I think it's wicked. <laughs> um, I really want her to join, you know. Well, unfortunately, it's, um, <sighs> that's the rules. We don't want your sort around here. <laughs> Do you know, as a result of that, Darth Vader is now the Tory party's spokesman on constitutional affairs. <laughs> and he regularly has tea with General Pinochet. <laughs> I have herbal tea, if you prefer. <laughs> that Margaret Thatcher scares me. <laughs> um, abroad now, and uh, I suppose the one disappointing thing about the Bill Clinton scandal this year is that we never got to see the articles of impeachment the Senate kept threatening Bill Clinton with which is a shame because he actually has to wear them. <laughs> They're a pair of large pink false rubber breasts, <laughs> which he has to wear at summits. Uh, but as the Clinton scandal broke over Monica's head, we tried, <laughs> we tried putting a stop to all the ridiculous, innuendo-filled headlines that were being written at the time uh, by holding a pun amnesty. 
60 seconds in which Peter spouted every conceivable bad headline about the Lewinsky case in the hope that it would finally lay them to rest. Zippergate, jailbait gate, trouser gate, bill gate, porked her gate, folly gate, shouldn't alter gate, young enough to be your daughter gate, white water on her dress gate, oral office, oval orifice, gland of the free, in gob we trust, governor of hard on saw, governor of pork and sword, a bitter bill to swallow, President Jaws Bush, swallow the leader, United Stains, first lady, yes I tried her but I didn't impale, Hillary Bill in the dock, the mouth ran up the cock, the cock sucked done, the mouth ran down and Monica's sick in a sock. <laughs> Stain of their union on her dress. Muffalo Bill, Lust William, William the Bonkerer, William the Borrelinge, William Burrows, William the Burst, the suck stops here, Monica throws up more evidence, Star Spangled Banger, the Unibanger, Zippity Hoo Ha, Sticky Pat for President, Monica lies under oath, Monica goes down in history, Head of State, President Part in there, come on, Spunk, make my day, scoffing at the rumours, scandal explodes in Monica's face, Chief of Staff, tongues wag in Washington, cubic inquiry, evidence commands in the wash. <laughs> Like me, you think Bill Clinton's penis is innocent, then please buy one of these ribbons. <laughs> and all proceeds from these ribbons go to hush money for thousands of women in Arkansas and Washington. <laughs> of course, if, uh, if his penis is found guilty, then I suppose constitutionally Al Gore's penis state takes over. Mm. <laughs> I suppose so. But actually, I hope for Clinton's sake that he does get off because in get the state. <laughs> No, but I do hope he gets off in the state of Ar because in the state of Arkansas, a condemned penis can still receive the death penalty, <laughs> which means it would be sent here to the electric pants. <laughs> Basically, if the offending member is found guilty of third degree being taken out and waved in front of a lady, <laughs> it will be placed on this wooden bench, restrained with these leather straps, <laughs> then this metal cap will be put into position. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. I think you're enjoying that a bit too much. I am. <laughs> I'm taking this home tonight, I tell you. <laughs> Plug it into you a car battery. You in. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? You from... promised. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, what will happen if the penis is found guilty, this cap, this metal cap, will be placed into position and then 50,000 votes will course through the little chap of the President of the United States of America. <laughs> I don't understand. Be... You'll have to demonstrate. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> now, this year, the tobacco industry spent the whole year defending itself against charges that passive smoking causes cancer. And it tried to argue that the case wasn't proven because all the people seeking compensation had died. <laughs> One of the pro-smoking pressure groups is called Forrest, and I spoke to its chairman, Lord Harris of High Cross, who's been campaigning to allow smokers the right to smoke at work or in public places. Now, since he wasn't bothered about me breathing in his tobacco fumes, I tested his own levels of tolerance by conducting the interview while farting throughout. <laughs> so here's how I got my rump ripe for action. So to help me, I've uh, asked BBC to come up with uh, these goodies. We've got some uh, pork stew here, Brussels, which I can't stand, parsnips, roasted, bean sprouts, two plates of beans, and... Uh, for dessert, some prunes. Um, also, to help me, we've already got this, which is um, a remote controlled fart machine. <laughs> and um, some stink bombs, which I'll let off. <laughs> the fart machine goes in the pocket like this. I'll just put it on the desk here. This is activated by a remote control here. <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah. You can try that. But I will try and eat as much of this as possible. <laughs> Now, I know that one of the uh, aims of Forrest is to, is to campaign for the rights of smokers to be able to smoke at their place of work. Yeah. Um, in uh, suitable places and all that stuff, yeah. Forrest keeps oh. saying that people should smoke with courtesy and consideration for others. Yeah. I, I, you see, what I detest is, is things like British Rail, now yes. these privatised companies, yes. that are persecuting my friend Peter Boddington oh. uh, for smoking on the train. He smoked on the Brighton train. Yes. What do you mean? I think since the majority of people don't smoke, I think that's where he's got to go. The majority of people don't smoke. <laughs> okay, but 15 million people smoke. You have to put up with a certain number of things that you don't like. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. 
Do you think there will come a time when smokers and non-smokers can live happily together? I hope the time will come when people can take a more adult view mm. and that there is consideration, okay. there is separate provision and, and, and we can live and let live. All right, and on that note, uh, Lord Harris, um, let's look forward to the moment when we can all behave like adults. Thank, thanks very much. <laughs> This is, of course, the one time of year when the whole family gathers under one roof and comes together around four or five televisions in different rooms. <laughs> I know digital television means that there'll be an ever larger raft of channels, so you can choose one to suit your own personal taste. For instance, if you want to watch a channel without Noel's house party on it, then next year you'll be able to do it. It'll be called BBC One. <laughs> now, Digital television has also brought us widescreen. Now, if you haven't got a set-top box, you might be wondering, is it any good? Well, yes, it is, and I'm going to show you that with the special remote control I have here. Um, it's a special long remote, so you can get all those quality digital channels. Actually, this is normal size. I'm only three and a half feet tall, but normally they scale everything down. <laughs> OK, Christmas specials. Now, some are great, some are birds of a feather. So. Let's have a look now at the Birds of a Feather Christmas special. Here it is, first of all, on a normal Too telly. She's middle it. class, they're working class, what's on I the other side? Um, <laughs> but if we now have a look at the <laughs> widescreen version... There we are. Now, can you see that? It's the only Fools and Horses Christmas special down the side, which is much better. It's fantastic. <laughs> OK, now BBC Two's Late Review. Has anyone ever watched The Late Review on widescreen? No, I'm getting ahead of myself. Has anyone ever watched The Late Review? <laughs> well, let me assure you that it is worth it. Here it is on a normal telly. By the way, you can also get this on narrow screen, which is great because it eliminates Tony Parsons. Uh, now, you might notice the knees there. There's a bit of flesh that the BBC have been putting in tantalising. Could be something exciting. Could be the two fat ladies relaxing in shorts. We don't know. But if you look on widescreen, there we are. It's a naked man and a naked lady. Something for everyone there. <laughs> now you know what they mean by a wide on. <laughs> now, sport has been radically transformed by widescreen digital TV. For example, if Rupert Murdoch's bid for Manchester United goes through, then you'll actually have to pay extra if you want to see any of the Man U players. Here we are. This is what it'll look like on your screens. See that? <laughs> All the Man U players have been scrambled. <laughs> and in Yap Stam's case, that actually makes them look better. Um, interestingly, that's how you'll see them even if you go to the match. <laughs> uh, unless you wear a Manchester United satellite dish in your head. And uh, even then, you have to buy the latest one every six months. <laughs> so, with the BBC losing all its sporting rights to Murdoch and Channel 4, the BBC are now fighting back with the ultimate crowd pleaser, rugby commentator Bill McLaren, over pictures from Teletubbies. Over now to Tubby Twickers for commentary on the Wales v La La match. <laughs> From our commentary position here, this magnificent stadium, for this 99th instalment of Scotland versus Wales. But uh, down there on the pitch, as the Welsh team take the field, they're going to find the pitch dry and holding. And there, Yaya Evans, but if you like to see him back in action after his ankle damage earlier on, there, Derwin Jones on six feet ten of him, and taking his part in the little team talk just uh, before the Back to the Tully Tubby rugby as soon as the referee blows for kick off or it off. <laughs> no, Tony Blair fancies himself as a great reforming Prime Minister and he's pretty well placed. He's got a majority of 170 
and a Tory opponent whose support is collapsing faster than Dennis Bergkamp at an airport. <laughs> so how is he going about reforming some of the ancient, outmoded, traditional parliamentary institutions such as democracy? <laughs> well, here's a quick guide on how the typical bill will now pass through the House of Commons. The Leader of the House, Anne Taylor, announces the bill in the House of Commons. While the Sergeant at Arms is legally required to post details of the legislation in an article by Tony Blair in the Sunday People. <laughs> The bill is then split into two. Bill A is called the People's Bill and is launched with a champagne reception at the Ministry of Sound in London by the new Prime Minister General Boy George wearing an Ann Taylor haircut. Meanwhile, <laughs> Bill B outlines in much more detail why there's no money for Bill A. Easy reference, it's known as Bill CS795. After its first reading, CS795 leaves the House of Commons and goes for further discussion up to Peter Mandelson's house. <laughs> a committee of ministers gets a chance to debate it by standing outside his window and looking in. <laughs> Meanwhile, the People's Bill goes forward to its promotional video stage. The bill's cover design is revealed to 50,000 people during the interval of an Oasis concert. <laughs> a vote is taken on CS 795. A number of clues are placed around the country as to where the second reading is going to be. <laughs> on the day of the vote, a bus takes 50 left-wing Labour MPs to Aberdeen on a fact-finding mission. <laughs> While tradition demands another 50 Labour women MPs are made pregnant by the sergeant at arms <laughs> and absent themselves with morning sickness. <laughs> as the vote is taken, a two-minute silence is held across the country and people are asked to pray for the success of the bill. Both bills then meet up again for the final committee stage, which takes place in an interesting new Spanish restaurant in Chelsea between Gordon Brown and his girlfriend. <laughs> the bill then goes to Richard Branson for his consent, and finally, Jack Straw inserts a clause about young offenders, and the bill becomes law. And looking ahead now, the year looks set to kick off with a lot more trouble for Jack Straw over the extradition of General Pinochet. But rather than go through all the hassle of endless legal appeals, Straw's come up with this idea to try to persuade him to see it not so much as an extradition to Spain, but as more of one of these, a Club 18 to 83 holiday. <laughs> and you can see he's there, and there's a lovely uh, beautiful girl there. Later on, he's going to drink a lot of sangria and strap electrodes to her genitals. <laughs> 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 18 to 83, is that a reference to the number of years it's going to take to sort the whole legal mess out? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. They say that Pinochet tortured a lot of people, but uh, he did have afternoon tea with Mrs Thatcher, so he's willing to take it as well as dish it out. <laughs> <laughs> Fair's fair. Back to Tubby Twickers now, where the referee is about to blow his whistle for the start of the match, and as we join him, the crowd are singing, Eh oh, sweet chariot. <laughs> the match gets ready to get the game started. But once again, a change in line-out procedure. The front men are three, and the one man at the back, Derwin Jones. Good tackle by Campbell. The referee has ordered the scrummage. And it's all about scrummaging technique down there. Good, uh, good firm footing. Gregor comes in with the restart. Gareth Rodellin up and thumping on again. Jones, Jenkins, Davies. Lewis battering on. Right, well, we're nearly at the end of the show, and as the year comes to an end, I'm sure we'll all be glad to see the back of those freak weather conditions that have been around this year. Here's the effect of 100-mile-per-hour hurricanes in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. And uh, most of those conditions, of course, were blamed on the sea current El Nino, which in turn blamed a Rastafarian current, <laughs> which invited it for a meal in the South Atlantic, then stole its car. <laughs> Meanwhile, despite mounting tensions in the Gulf, Defence Secretary George Robertson announced deep cuts in the defence budget, which means that ready to fly out to the Gulf at any time is our new squadron of EasyJet Harriers. <laughs> Able to fly to Baghdad for £29. <laughs> Although for takeoff, you have to go to an aircraft carrier near Luton. <laughs> And uh, this year, of course, the government decided not to ban fox hunting, uh, but in order to placate certain pressure groups, uh, they did announce plans to allow the hunting of known paedophiles. There you go. <laughs> now, landowners 
and parents will be allowed to send a pack of baying dogs after these pests and uh, drive them back into their pebble-dashed burrows. That's all from us tonight. We'll be back on New Year's Day, but before we go, since it's the season of goodwill, we'll leave you with a special greeting card we sent to Tony Blair for Valentine's Day. And uh, here's the little girl we got to deliver it. Please welcome Penny. <laughs> Now, yes, nice to have you back on, because we gave you a Valentine's card, and what did you do with it? I gave it to Tony Blair. You gave it to Tony Blair. Let's have a look and see. Oh, there you are. Oh, there you are. There's a Valentine's card. It says on the front, Be my Valentine. I love you even more than you do. <laughs> Let's just go open up inside. Let's just see inside there. Uh, you came to visit my school, but now you're rubbish. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, and a rose, a red rose. OK. So, did you find him? Yeah. You did? OK. Let's have a look. Where is he? Is that his car? Yeah. Gosh, you breached his security. Well done, you. <laughs> He's been trying to do that for months. There he is. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> well done. We'll be back on New Year's Day. Uh, by the way, please don't worry. No turkeys were harmed in the making of this programme. Uh, but we are going to eat them all tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>